Welcome to Shirt Cover Lit. I am Adrian Fort. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we're here uh, with a little ditty we like to call Variety Hour. That's right. Uh, can we have a side note about this Variety Hour? What's that? Hour? What's that? Uh, this is Variety Hour 21. First of all, we missed 20. We didn't acknowledge it, but this right. is 21. Good for us. Uh, we filmed this once yes. already. Technically, this is Variety Hour 21.5. Yeah. Uh, because we filmed a 30 minute variety hour segment and basically found out the camera wasn't on. Yeah. So. Big, uh, big note with that, Variety Hour is now old enough to drink. That's good enough, because, you know, give alcohol to, you know, 21 week year olds. 21, right? If whatever makes you happy. All right, hey, uh, makes me happy. First and foremost, though, business. We've got housekeeping. I love starting out with business. Yes. Because business is awesome. Business is good. Business, uh, business is Business great. is a booming. Uh, we have new patrons. We do. And, as always, we honor patrons with figures. Yes. Here, side note. Uh, Patreon contacted us because we have an inordinate amount of female patrons versus male patrons. This is legally absolutely not because we promised to sleep with anyone. I'm terrified of your Twitter account. What? That's why. <laughs> that's why we have a separate account for okay. Cover Lit. Anyway. Uh, would you like to start with this uh, patronage? How, how would you like yes. to swing out this? Uh, well, first, and we're extremely Midwestern, as Steve Donahue will be sure to tell you. Um, so if we mispronounce anything, be sure to let us know. That because is not we will. that is not our aim, right? But Ni Le became a patron, and uh, you've got a little bit of a story about Doctor Who, don't you? Yes. Yes. If you don't care about Doctor Who, that's cool. I'm that here. is not fair. You don't care about Doctor I, Who. I do not cares. know about Doctor Who. I cannot believe you've never it's, experienced Doctor Who. It's true, it's just not fair to say. Okay. Side note, before I get started on that, okay. uh, did I tell you, I uh, just got engaged recently. Really? Uh, fiance and I's uh, wedding engagement ring, whatever, is Doctor Who themed. What? It's Doctor Who themed. Oh, uh, what? That's how big this is. Say it again. It's Doctor Who themed. What is? My ring. Your what ring? My wedding ring. Your wedding ring is Doctor Who, Doctor Who yes. themed. Uh, there's actually a joke. The least impressive Doctor you could have themed a wedding around, I think. Okay, so your mind's like it's blue it's got lovely little cogs and whatnot hers is also blue has a large overpriced rock because that's what you're supposed to do in a wedding situation uh, it says together forever through time and space delightful now the most disappointing thing about this how come you never buy me pretty things how come you never buy me jewelry because you never tell me i'm pretty i tell you you're pretty i don't recall and i'm very all the time on twitter uh and one day i plan to travel the universe Correcting people's grammar, and I will be known as Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that's for you. Okay, so Doctor Who yes. for uh, our new patron. Here's what we found out because all three patrons this week we have not had any contact with. Well, uh, very one, little. Very one little. sent us yes. an email, yes. which is fantastic. Um, which you are all welcome to do through our Gmail account that you have through. Yes. Uh, pa uh, Patreon. Please, uh, all three of you who just jumped on the sweet bandwagon. Well, all 15 of you. All 15 of you. Uh, start a conversation with us. Get a hold of us. Let us know what you're reading, what you're talking about, what you're interested in. Uh, so we don't have to creep your social media. Uh, because or if you prefer it that way. I mean, we're I, we're I, very I, skilled at this point. I feel terrible. Uh, so, Doctor Who. Yes. Get on that Twitter machine. Yes. This patron is a writer. Yes. Very important here at Strip Coverlet. Uh, well, yes, take huge pride in writers. Uh, she says at one point on her Twitter that the concept of fallen angels keeps trickling into her writing. Insert a Doctor Who gif. She also claims to be a fangirl, and I'll be damned if I've never met a fangirl who didn't love Doctor Who. Okay. So, fallen angels, yes. Doctor Who. I say we need a blink angel. A Adrian says, what the fuck's a blink angel? Uh, I get all pissy in the action figure store. Really, really does. There are no angels. No angels. So, Cyberman, you can't go wrong with that. That is a staple of Doctor Who culture. It looks like the Putty Man from uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers does, actually. and uh, Ultron had a baby. Uh, this is true. Uh, so, we hope you enjoy it. I hope you're a Doctor Who fan. Like I said, there's never been a fangirl who was not a Doctor Who fan. Uh, if not, let me know. I'll take the Cyberman home. We'll replace him. <laughs> I'm cool with that. Uh, but thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. Next up. And I'm probably going to butcher this as well, because, you know, Midwest. 
Uh, Amanda Appel. That's that's how I would say it. I'd say Appel. Uh, again, don't know much about you. Mm. Had to creep on your social media account. Uh, all three of you have very well guarded private social media accounts. Thanks. That made it no easier. Uh, however. We found out that you work for the American Red Cross. Like you've never been blocked by a woman on social media before. Uh, yeah, and usually I can find some other social media <laughs> around to creep on. Thank you. Uh, but she works for the American Red Cross, Amanda does. Ah! That, what are you doing? Are you trying to kill me? Uh, anyway. Kill yourself. We talk a lot about on this channel about, you know, uh, oh, we're going to make the world a better place through literature and art. Uh, but we're not out there saving people. We're, we're not saving lives. Exactly. Uh, this is someone who actually does contribute to society in a huge way. This is, a, we are about enrichment, you are about survival, right? Absolutely so. Uh, <laughs> gotta stop smoking cigars. American Red Cross is a great thing. I gotta stop burning holes in the back of my shirt. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, so, American Red Cross, Amanda, Supergirl. Supergirl. I think we can tie that together beautifully. <laughs> yeah, that, that symbol, no, no, I don't care what the movie universe has perverted it to be. Ben Affleck. Uh, that symbol means power. That symbol means strength. That symbol means doing the right thing. I think so. Yes. Uh, so I hope you like your job at the American Red Cross. <laughs> uh, but we think that's awesome. We think that's a great thing. Uh, so we got a symbol of hope. And also, super. Amanda has contacted us through our uh, yes. Gmail. Thank you very much for the suggestion. Yes. We have not gotten back to you yet, but we will very soon. Absolutely. So. Uh, we want to make it a joint effort, not me emailing you back or Dalton emailing you back. Correct. So. Yes. Uh, finally, Samantha Nivet. I would say Nivet. 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 Yes. One of those. Y maybe. Welcome to the Midwest. Let uh, us know. Even more difficult to find anything else about. Uh, we had to dig for this one. Very much dig. So we highly encourage you to send us, you know, an email, a message, comment down below, and be like, hey, you fucked up. Yeah. I'm cool with that. Uh, however, we did notice that she put up a picture at one point in time of a Christmas tree Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy. How can you go wrong with Guardians of the Galaxy? Guardians of the Galaxy is one of the most charming vi movies that I've seen in a very long time. Quite possibly the most charming Marvel movie I've ever seen. And we are extremely charming booktubers, I like to think. Not so bad. I love Chris Pratt. Yes. I do. I love Parks and Rec. I love Nick Offerman, Ron Swanson, whatever you want to call him. It, it's all great. Mm -hmm. However, Groot. How can you have Groot? Oh. That's Rocket. With... A little Groot. Best friends. Best buds. This is like Chewie and uh, Han Solo. We're best friends. You and us. <laughs> uh, so we hope you're a huge Guardian of the Galaxy fan. We did notice that on your page. Uh, so we would like to immortal you as Rocket Raccoon? Yes, Rocket Raccoon and Groot. And Groot. Uh, I know Groot. I like Groot. Uh, a symbol of our symbiotic relationship. Yes. Uh, so we have that. We hope these are all satisfactory in some sense. Uh, if they're not, please let us know how bad we did at this this week. Uh, and let us know if we butchered your names. We absolutely butchered your names. We always butcher the names. Uh, but all together, thank you guys so much. Yes. We say this way too much. We yes. do. But it's, it's super humbling. It's Very awesome. humbling. Um, it's great. And again, a little... A little trinket towards being full-time yes. and trying to make the world a better place in the way that we know how. Um, now, when we say full-time, I think it's important also to go into what that means. We are not looking to live lavish lifestyles. Uh, $2,000 a month, I am full-time. Oh, yeah. I am full-time YouTube. Uh, this isn't us wanting to, you know, jet around, stay at nice hotels, and spend money. Uh, if this, you know, pays my student loan, keeps the power on, and puts food on the table, yeah, I'm in. Yeah, so that we can then diversify, become more embedded in the YouTube culture, be more writers, absolutely, um, and, and spread any type of message that it is that we believe we have to spread. Uh, one more message to our patrons uh, before we lay off this and talk a little bit yes. variety hour. Uh, we're going to try to update the Patreon soon. Uh, we're going to hope to make that a little more interactive, have some more features. I'd love to get a small series going for patrons only. Yes. Also, if you did not catch in the uh, one the, the one K Q and A celebration extravaganza announcements, every one of our fifteen patrons at this point, and we are extending the the, the patronage offer through August. Um, if you become a patron before the end of August, we promise you a full length review on any poem that you want us to do. Of your choice. Yes. So your uh, favorite poem, 
Uh, unless, your least favorite poem. Unless you try to pull like, oh, Beowulf, please. <laughs> that's, that's that's an epic. I so, would say that epics are a bit of a different ca- classification. Be thoughtful in the yeah, length yes. of the poem. Uh, be but kind. A poem of your choice. Be uh, kind, rewind. And that will be for you uh, personally as a small thank you for what you've done for us. Absolutely. Anyway. Anyway. Variety hour. Variety. What do you want to talk about? Uh, well, first off, a little, another little, maybe not a little bookkeeping, maybe. Um, Janelle from the Page Turner. Amy from the Dusty Bookshelf finally talked her into joining the Twitter bandwagon, which is an ever-growing booktube phenomenon. Uh, Most of your favorite booktubers are going to be on Twitter. I don't know if you knew this yet. Uh, We are there. We are perhaps your least favorite booktubers. But Janelle from the Page Turner uh, was recently talked into joining Twitter from Amy from the Dusty Bookshelf. And she is at Book of the Ball. So follow her as well, uh, because she's bringing new insights and new blood into the booktube community. That's the closest thing to a shout out we do. Pretty much. That's what we got. Yeah. Uh, anything you want to talk about? What do you want to talk about? What have uh, you got? You know, we talked about this for a long time. And we got away from the subject, but I think it's time to bring it back up. Let's talk politics. You politics. Say politics. Okay. Sorry to beat a dead horse. Um, wow. But. Yeah. Old Bernie dropped out of the race. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of dead horses that deserve beating, I think. You're telling me. Right. Uh, a lot of live horses that deserve beating. Huge Bernie Sanders fan. Huge. Yeah. Uh, very disappointed with the outcome of how that went. Thought he had yeah. a lot of good intentions, good ideas, and a good plan for the country that desperately needs a good plan right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, endorsed Hillary Clinton. I understand the move. It's a political move. I don't understand the move. It's a political move. I don't understand. What does Bernie Sanders have to lose at this point? Bernie- He's not running next time. He's not running next time. Here's the thing. If Bernie Sanders runs now, and we have a three-party race. The Democratic Party we have now is directly split. Right. I am not suggesting that he maintain his... I think he should still run. If he does not, um, which he is not, why endorse Hillary? Why, why do that? Bernie Sanders is taking the movement that he created and saying, hey, guys, we did what we could. We're not done. They have a lot of good ideas. They have a good social movement going. I think they plan to do great things. But the first step in that is ensuring Donald Trump is not the president. Because mm. if Hillary Clinton is the president, there is hope that some of these changes that Bernie Sanders was working towards will actually be seen. Like, like what? Give me an example. I know recently Hillary Clinton's mentioned the uh, working towards free higher education. She's adapted that from Bernie's campaign. Uh, she's adapted a lot Do of Do you think that she did that in order to get the endorsement from Bernie. Oh, no. The endorsement from Bernie? No, yes. she did that to steal votes from Bernie. Let's be honest how that works there. Well, but she will, but she got the endorsement. What do you think she gave Bernie to get the endorsement? Look, here's the thing. You tweet Hillary Clinton right now and say, if you say nipple sprinkles, I will vote for you. Guess what Hillary Clinton's going to say? Nipple sprinkle, nipple sprinkle, nipple sprinkle. This is true. Okay? So... Bernie has absolutely nothing to gain from this. Why does he? Why? Why endorse her? I think Bernie Sanders. He is losing by endorsing her. I think he's a humble man. He's a humble man. Then bow out of the race. You don't have to endorse Hillary Clinton. He bowed out of the race and he said, "Look, we cannot allow Donald Trump to be president." And I agree with that. That's a dangerous move, especially with his vice president pick he has right now. It's terrifying. I don't know much about his vice president. Holy pick. shit! That is a terrifying combination. Well, go of on. Bernie Sanders is doing everything... No, 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 no. Go on about the uh, vice president. I'll get there. Okay. Bernie Sanders is doing everything he can to ensure that Donald Trump doesn't receive the presidency. Because, as we saw through the preliminaries to this, Bernie Sanders supporters are avid Bernie Sanders supporters. Mm -hmm. They do not like Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders is doing what he can to say, hey, we need a Democrat in the White House. The majority of the nation has spoke up and said Hillary Clinton is the woman we want to represent us. We need this Democrat in the White House. Democrat, I, look, if, if Mitt Romney decided to run right now, he'd have my vote. Yes. Okay? I don't care about Democrat or Republican. And if he would have told Dalton of four years ago that, I would have slapped him. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's... Yeah, eh. This right. whole Donald Trump thing is horrible. Y- yeah, but uh, you, you speak about the lesser of two evils. And I think, look, there's two ways that a Donald Trump presidency could go. It could be every bit the disaster that we think in the downfall of Western civilization. Or Donald Trump's ego gets, I don't want to say wise, but wises up and understands that he could be remembered as the worst president of all time. So he appoints a lot of strong individuals 
in positions that they know what they're doing, right? And he takes all the credit for it, okay. which is a Donald Trump move, right? But I, look, I, I just don't know. I don't know that there is a best case scenario with Hillary. I know that there is a worst case scenario with Donald Trump. The best case scenario with Donald Trump is he doesn't ruin everything, right? Okay. Uh, he, he appoints intelligent people in positions where there needs to be intelligent people. And I think that, that his ego could get in the way and force that. Now, Sam Harris seems to think otherwise. And I, I value Sam Harris's opinion very much on things. Uh, not to say that I let Sam Harris make up my mind, but he is endorsing Hillary as well. And uh, that might be too strong of a word, endorsing. But uh, I think that there's a lot of things that could go wrong here. Okay. And I don't know that, that Bernie stands to gain anything by, by endorsing Hillary. I think that Bernie loses a lot of credibility that way. Uh, I, I'm just really, really trying to quickly pick an article here that will assist me here in talking about Mike Pence, who is Donald Trump's presumptive vice president nominee. Right. Uh, but I'm not sure if he's well, the pick we need. Obama's got a vice president that everybody said was just going to be the end of things. And we haven't heard from him for eight years. Right? <laughs> um, so I'm smiling I, Joe Biden. Yeah. So I don't know that, that the vice president... Look, Al Gore disappeared for eight years, and then he came out with a movie. Okay. Let me give you a quote. And uh, mainstream media is notorious right now. They are, they're not what they used to be. Right. However, uh, this is from CN, CNBC. Uh, this is a ballsy quote to put on. If Trump had picked a more moderate person instead of the devil incarnate, he would have been more appealing. To compare someone and say the devil incarnate next to Donald Trump. Right. That's, that's okay. This man is terrifying. Uh, CNBC is going for shock value. Part of the reason that the country has come to the fact that we are voting for either Hillary or for Donald Trump is the fact that people who are able to articulate are not articulating and they're speaking in hyperbole as well. Okay, we don't need that. We do not need that, do we? I don't think so, no. So? Uh, I, I don't know. And maybe uh, maybe I'm just not a conservative person, uh, but these things concern me. Mike Pence says he's a Christian, a conservative, and a Republican in that order. Well, that is... All, re all, all, all politicians say that, though. All politicians say that, literally. Uh, so I, I don't know. I don't know why you're jumping on that. Um, there's only so much you can get done as a vice president. Correct. There's only but, so much you can get done as a president. But in the event that something happens to Donald Trump, this man will be running our country. And in the events that uh, the way this is looking, uh, this man just absolutely terrifies me. Okay. Uh, I mean, if there is a worst case scenario, and I said for a long time with the whole Donald Trump thing, my suggestion with his term in office is if he got the election, he needed to pick a, he needed to bridge the gap and pick a more liberal conservative, very well established. Like the guy from Ohio. What was his name? Uh, John Kasich? Yeah. A very well established candidate. Yeah. Uh, because Trump is not a politician. He's a businessman. He needed right. somebody who was heavy into politics. Right. Uh, this is not this man. No. Uh, so, we joke about it all the time about moving towards Canada, but sounding better and better every day. Yeah, so if you were watching this from Canada and you have a spare room, let us know. As my uh, sweet southern drawl will say, I, does just, Justin Trudeau... Justin Trudeau? <laughs> does he do anything wrong? I, I, I don't think so. You don't see it. Uh, he seems to be a young, energetic, very progressive candidate. Well, he, he mirrors Obama, the Obama movement a lot. Right? Oh, no, I think he is, uh, he is the young man's Obama. Okay, um, Obama, okay, I, okay, I can see that. Uh, and this man, I mean, where Obama had to, and maybe that's just American culture. When Obama became president of the United States, he had to calm down a little bit. He had to move into a more conservative, uh, proper presidency. Right. Justin he, Trudeau, if that's oh, how, is it Justine, Justin? Justin, I think. Trudeau? Yeah. I hope I'm not butchering that, you know, Prime Minister of Canada. <laughs> Uh, Theme of the show, butchering names. Yes, especially um, Canadian ones. Here's the thing, though. When Obama came into the White House, a lot of blood spilled in Washington, right? A lot of new blood. Yes. Uh, was that for the best? It's hard to say at this point. 
I will say. Perhaps that is part of the thing that has slowed Obama down a little bit. That is uh, Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon was notoriously known for not being one of our best presidents. I would argue now that as history has taken its time, Richard Nixon was a fine president. Uh, if you look at his foreign relations with China, that was absolutely groundbreaking. I think th those are, those are, those are uh, that's a thin floor. I don't know. Old Nixon did a lot for the country. Not only did he do a lot for the country, but he had to deal with the Vietnam crisis. Yeah. And that was not a good topic at the time. Right. Uh, but the man dealt with it the best he could. Okay. Uh, did he make some mistakes? Absolutely. <laughs> However. <laughs> mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. However, if you look at some of his presidency, not bad. Not also, bad I'm, I'm fairly positive that's why Ben Stein got to be Ben Stein. Ben okay. Stein, I believe, was a speechwriter for Nixon. I and uh, after that, he was set and got to do the acting thing, right? So I believe that's where that comes from. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, I'm just saying Montreal. Uh, that's always been one of my spots to move, and Montreal's been highly considered. Okay. Uh, besides that, New Orleans. I've always loved that southern, Cajun, French, laid-back lifestyle. You get to move anywhere in the world right now. Where does it go? Back to France. Back to France. In a heartbeat. Yeah? Loved it. Loved it. Absolutely. Why? A uh, very different atmosphere than what we have here. Very laid back. Uh, there's always that stereotype that the French are snobby and assholes. No, the French are wonderful people. Wonderful people. You are all day, every day immersed into art. You are immersed into culture. Uh, it's, it's considered an evening outing to just go down to the beach and have a bottle of wine and people watch and uh, engage with other people. Of course it would. Anywhere there's a beach, that's the way. I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, you can go have a seat at a cafe and sit and just enjoy company. Uh, if you walk anywhere in the Midwest, watch out for that guy. Something's not right about well, it. Well, also in the Midwest, you're not really walking anywhere. You've got to drive there because it's everything's five miles apart. Uh, correct, correct. Uh, I just really love the atmosphere in France. Uh, it was wonderful. Uh, but another one on my list is Portland, Oregon. I love the city of Portland. And I've always had a fascination with the Pacific Northwest, uh, Seattle, Portland. I'm good with either, but I've always just been uh, just driven to Portland. Okay. I might, uh, I might choose Montana. I've never been to Montana, but I've known a lot of people from Montana. It was, I've known a lot of people from Montana. It seems they all moved here 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. So uh, apparently half the population of Montana left. But Montana seems up your alley. Never have, to, never have to see anyone. Well, it's when your nearest neighbor's, you know, 20 miles away. Big sky country, baby. Oh, God. I couldn't do it. Yeah. I'd lose my fucking mind yeah. in Montana. I want to, one of the things I want to do in life is I want to go, I want to go on an archaeological dig and I want to go just regular fossil hunting. Okay. There's no real fossil hunting to do around here that I, that I know of. I've, I've read a couple books on fossils in the Midwest. You're finding them all in, in sedentary rock, right? So, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean you don't know? You don't I don't know. know. What? Uh, it's, and you know, that's the thing when, uh, about a year back, fiance and I very seriously looked at Montreal. Uh, we were pricing apartments. We were looking for jobs, looking at how to do dual citizenship with the United States and Canada, very seriously considered Montreal. Uh, it's something about that's always just appealed to me. Yes. And again, you never hear anything bad about Canada. Yeah. I mean, if you sit and ask anyone in the known world, hey, United States, Canada, how the, what's better? They're all, fuck Canada. The United States is in bad shape right now. There's a lot of regressive stuff that goes on in Canada, Regre uh, regressive left stuff that goes on in Canada, okay. which is not to say it's the worst thing in the world, but um, a lot of anti-intellectualism in that way. Not to say that the whole country's anti-intellectual, I'm not saying that, but they have very much that same air that the United States has, okay. right? So I, I don't know. I, I think at some point, and this is not really on the topic, at some point the pendulum has to swing back towards intellectualism. Hopefully. Right? It has to. Uh, it has I, to. I Instead, just, we're worshipping the Kardashians and Donald Trump. Which? Why didn't he pick Kim Kardashian as his running bait? Uh, I had a connection. I, I can't make it now because I'm sure I'll skew my facts and people fact check me. Uh, but I was going to argue that because uh, O.J. Simpson denied a team offer, we have to camp with the Kardashians. You can make that connection through a chain of events. Did you know that? What? Because O.J. Simpson denied an offer with a specific team, we now have the Kardashians. I had no idea. I know that, that uh, the Kardashians f 
father yes. was his lawyer, right? Yes. Was it? Was he also his agent or something? Uh, basically, the way this would work, uh, this works. O.J. Simpson denied some team offer, which moved him to whatever city he was in. Buffalo, New York, uh, which led him to meet. Uh, I don't remember the woman's name. The O.J. case was a little bit before my time. Okay. Uh, which, of course, there was the murder trial. Right. Which in which the Kardashian's father was his lawyer. This is conspiracy theorist. Which made him famous, which therefore made his daughters rich and wealthy, which therefore begot the Kardashians. Mm. Had O.J. Simpson not moved to Buffalo, New York, we would not have to deal with the Kardashians. That's conspiracy theorist. That's that is not that's, conspiracy. That's theorist. those Henry Turtle Dove books. No, that's. Um, Look, we got a literature reference in. That is, <laughs> if the South had won the Civil War, World War II never happens. I blame right? O.J. Simpson for the Kardashians. Something, someone has to pay for I, the Kardashians. I, 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 Tim. Someone has to be blamed for the Kardashian phenomenon. Absolutely him. So, okay, if that's if that's the way you want to go. If O.J. Simpson is going to be your fall guy for that, um, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to argue with you. But well, he hadn't taken the fall for anything else. So <laughs> let's give him this. <laughs> Oh, there's my joke oh, for the day. Man. I'm proud of that. Uh, anyway, uh, anything else you really want to talk about on this? Uh, oh, can we mention a little bit of something? Uh, we have recently been uh, in touch with some publishers. Way back when Lizzie at the Allery told me about this. Yes. Uh, major thank to, thanks to Lizzie for introducing to the... Uh, Major thanks to Lizzie for introducing this to us. I haven't had sugar in two weeks because you have me on this health <laughs> kick. I'm halfway through an orchata right now and I'm just shaking. Mm. Thank you, Lizzie, for introducing us to this topic. Uh, thank you, Steve Donahue, for pushing me in the right direction with this. Uh, but we have got a hold of some publishers, and I can say with 100% accuracy, uh, we will start receiving advanced readership copies of some literary fiction. Yes. Uh, which everybody who gets these ARCs, as they're called, the young kids say nowadays, they just get the teen novels, the young adult readers, the sci-fis. We're getting which the late fiction. Read. And that's cool. Yeah. That's what you like. Uh, but we're really excited about this. And we're hoping to start doing some reviews on them through the channel. Uh, probably similar to our quickie videos, uh, but more so kind of like a first look. Like a reader response. A reader response. I'm not sure what we can and can't say. There's a lot of uh, logistics I have to work out with it. Uh, but hopefully it's going to be coming soon. Yes. And that is great because that will bridge our gap because we do a lot of classics. Yes. Uh, we do a lot of uh, literature. Established literary fiction. Yes. We don't know anything about pop lit. What's popular right now, what's hot. Right. Hopefully this will bridge that. Yes. We'll see. Yes. So, if you want to follow us through that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give us a like. We definitely appreciate the likes. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at Strip Cover and on Facebook at Strip Cover Lit.